Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're gonna to be having a look at database migrations. We're gonna look at how to version control your database. Um, we're gonna focus on basically, you know, what database migrations are, how they work. And we're gonna go into a demo using Java and Flyway. But the great thing about, you know, what we're gonna go over today is that the concept of database migrations is the exact same across any language any tool. The implementation details will differ slightly, but we're not going to focus on those anyways. We're just going to focus on the high level concept. So if you enjoyed this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So first things first, let's try to understand what the problem is here. What problem are we trying to solve? And then we'll, we'll go into the, the tools that are solving the problem. So when you're building an application, of course, over time, your application changes in terms of the, the shape of the application, the models, the functions, everything changes. And usually you keep this in source control. So you might use Git and you know you might push your changes up to GitHub. And basically what that does is it gives you, you know, a few really big benefits. Um, first of all, it keeps your you know, changes so you don't lose them locally, of course. Um, but more importantly, it allows you to share your code with other developers that, that come on and they can you know, take the latest version of the application. They can also go back and debug, you know, uh, if certain commits are pointing to certain environments, they can go back and debug that. And of course, for things like continuous deployment, um, you need a way to, to have different versions of your code. So that way, when you've got a new version, you can just upload it and your environments can just take the new version. They know what the version they were on before, they know the new version, they can take that and deploy the code. So if we just had an application with no, you know, let's, we, had, we had no external dependencies, that's super simple. Now, as soon as you start doing a, something a bit more complicated, let's say in this in this scenario, I'm, I'm building an application with a, a list of users. You know, maybe these are um, subscribers to, you know, to a, 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 an email list and I wanna send them emails. Well, now I need to start storing those uh, that data in the database. Now, as soon as we add this dependency, we have this kind of external uh, but explicit dependency that we need to track as well, which is basically the schema of the database, right? So this version of the application, you can see here I have a, an insert into um, uh, the user, I'm inserting the email. This is only gonna work if my database has a certain schema, which is this here. Uh, user might have an ID, might have an email. If it doesn't have that, it's not gonna work. The, the application is gonna fail. So these, these two are basically tightly coupled. So the question then becomes, how do we make sure that the state of the database or the schema of the database matches the required state of the application? And this is basically the, the, the issue that database migration solves. So you could try to do this manually where, you know, I, I build the application, I, I manually insert some SQL and I create this user. And then, you know, a developer comes and, and, and joins the team and I, I send them a SQL script or a bunch of SQL scripts, I, I export that. Um, but then of course, if I'm working on different versions and I've, you know, I've added fields or changed things locally, then, you know, I need to somehow reset it. And then of course, continuous deployment doesn't work at all because, you know, how are we meant to tell the environments, the, the change of the database, do we, you know, log on to the, the databases themselves and update the scripts manually? What if you make a mistake? There's a whole kind of um, range of issues that can kind of stem from trying to do this manually. So. The, the solution for this here is basically database migrations. Um, and we'll, we'll basically see that uh, as we go below. Another issue is, of course, as this uh, this data evolves. So I have email now, I change the application now, I'm gonna add a name here. Um, again, how do you share those changes? How do you make sure that everyone has the, the updated version? Um, yeah, all of these things, this is what the, the issue solves. So if we go down to what exactly a migration is, what migration tools do and, and how they solve this issue, well, a migration, all it is when somebody says migration, it's just a script. That's it. It's just a SQL script, or it could be a Bash script, or a JavaScript, or a Python script. It could be any sort of script, but its sole purpose is to take the database from one state to another, to migrate the the schema, the state of one database from uh, state A to state B. Right. So in this case here, we are we've got this create user script, and we can see this version zero. So this is the first ever migration that we have in the uh, the database. And all we're doing is we're creating a user table. We're adding an ID. We're adding an email. That's a migration, right? And then later on, we might add a name. So we're altering the table. Uh, we're adding the name. So these are very similar to like commits in a in a GitHub repo, right? This is every action that was taken in order to get the the state of the database from zero to where we need it to now. And of course. Um, in addition to this is one other step that's needed, which is basically capturing the, the state, um, i.e. where we are in the kind of in the migration lifecycle. So if we imagine if we just move this aside here and let's say we move this one aside here. So we're just focusing on a brand new database. If I run the migration here, it runs the first one. So now we have let's just go up and take this um, this user table. So now we have uh, a user table in this database. So great. Now, the next time we add a new script, we basically need a, a way of knowing 
you know, which scripts have we run already? Because we don't want to rerun the initial script because then we need to start doing complicated things with SQL checking if things exist. So we always need to know where we are in the in the uh, in the migration history, basically. And this is typically why most migration tools will also maintain within usually the same database uh, some sort of version table. Um, and this is basically the state. This is where we are. So when we run the first one, we can say, "Hey, we're on version zero. So we, we've run the first script. And then when the second script comes along, when we we say, "Okay, now we can migrate." You know, it can check the database and it can say, well, we've already done version zero, so we're already on version zero. We don't need to rerun this one, but we can see a new version one. So we're going to apply the full name. So then it might, you know, take all these, you know, apply the full name and update this to one and so on and so forth. So conceptually, this is all we need to know. This is database migrations in a nutshell. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into uh, an example. Like I said, we're going to be using... Um, we're going to be using Flyway uh, and Java, but the concepts here are going to be the same for any language. So if you're working with Java and Flyway, this tutorial is going to be good enough for you to, to get started with it. But um, if you are used to JavaScript or Python or whatever it is, just don't focus too much on the implementation details, uh, but the concepts will be the same anywhere you go. So yeah, let's get right into it. So I've got my very simple application running here and you can just see very simple Java application. I'm using Gradle as the build tool. Uh, and I've just got one class, which is this app class. So I'm just gonna close this for a moment. All this is doing is I've got a main method here. It's getting a connection to the database, um, which you might do in many different ways. I'm using something called Juke to, to build my uh, SQL queries. So that's what this uh, is initializing basically the, the, um, the Juke context. And then I'm just saying, hey, insert into the user table, this email read at example.com, execute that. And then I'm just getting the results, select star or select asterisk from user and fetch. And then I'm just printing out the result. So that's that's all I'm doing. Now on the right hand side here, we can see basically my, my Postgres database. And as you can see in my Postgres database, um, we don't have uh, any database. So if I go down to my database connection string here, we're seeing we have uh, localhost, uh, Postgres and the schema here, because I'm on, I'm using Postgres, we, we have a schema. Well, we're going to be on, uh, we're going to be using the migrations tutorial schema. So we don't have that schema there. So I could go, you know, right click here or, you know, write some SQL and, and create the schema manually, but we don't want to do that. We want to do this all through some sort of database migration tool, right? And of course, if I try to run this application now, because there's no schema, because there's nothing there, it's just going to fail. It's going to say, hey, you know, the, the table user doesn't exist. In fact, your schema doesn't exist at all. So let's bring in uh, Flyway. Uh, in this case, and let's start to to yeah to see how the migrations work. So, because I'm using Gradle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the build uh, Gradle file, and all I need to do here is I'm going to add a, a plugin. So with Flyway, you can run this in many different ways. So you can run it as a command line application. Um, you can run it as a you know directly encoded with Java. You can use Maven or Gradle. Because I've got Gradle here, I'm just going to use the Gradle plugin. Um, I just like the plugin. It just means I can keep it all inside my application. You don't need to install any external dependencies. But again, really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to add the um, the Gradle plugin here. And the one other thing it requires is it just needs some details about uh, the, the connection. So basically it needs you to configure Gradle. So this is what you would otherwise maybe pass in to the command line arguments. You need these details somewhere so that it knows how to connect to your database. So for Flyway, I'm just telling it, I'm just using uh, you know Postgres driver. I'm saying, here's the URL to the database. Here's the user, here's the password. And here's the schema and the default schema. One specific thing, I think this is Flyway specific, is that Flyway will automatically create the, um, the default schema for you. Uh, I've, I've played around with some other migration tools that don't do that by default. They expect you to handle that, you know, as part of the, uh, you know, as part of the um, infrastructure pipeline. In this case, this is going to create the, the the this is going to create the schema for us. So that's perfect. So once we have Flyway or whatever tool it is uh, you have installed, I'm going to close that. All you need to do is run your migration script. So I've not actually got any migrations yet, but in this case, because I'm using Flyway, I just want to show you how it kind of starts to track things. So if I run Flyway migrate here, and I've got logging set up, you can see here uh, it started to log. You know, there's a bit of a mess, but there's a, a few things to 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 focus on, which is hey. Um, migration tour, it's up to date. There is no, there's no migrations, and you can see here skipping file system. And that's because Flyway, as well as all migrations tool, will expect you to have a certain directory in this case DB slash migrations with all your migration scripts, um, and the migration scripts will be in a certain format. But it's, it's not found that we haven't added that anywhere. This is a brand new application. We don't have that. So it's just basically said, hey, we don't have a migration to run, but I've done what I can. And in this case, what Flyway can is basically it's, it's created the um, the schema. So I can see now I've got five migrations tutorial that's it's added that and if I go into migrations tutorial on the tables we can see there's this flyway schema history table we didn't create that and that's because flyway created it for us similarly again any tool that you have will create its own its own version of this 
and you can see here that um, the version here is null. So we've not actually run any migrations. We're on we're on null version. We haven't done anything. But all we have done is we've run the um, Flyway internally has run this migrations script um, to create the uh, the schema, which is the migrations tutorial schema. So this is basically the starting point for Flyway. Your other languages might be slightly different, might be the exact same, but conceptually all we're doing here is initializing um, initializing the migration tool. Cool, so let's go add some migration. So uh, I've got a migration here um, on the right-hand side, which I'll, which I'll basically copy in. Flyway looks for a specific directory, so uh, db uh, slash migration. So we'll add that in, and we're just going to copy this file here. So this file, note it's v0, that's exactly what we started on, underscore, underscore, and then there's a little description, create user table, dot SQL. So this is very specific to Flyway. Any tool that you're working with might be slightly different, but ultimately there, there will be some sort of naming convention, whether it's in the file, um, the file name, or it's whether it's within the file. I think, you know, I think I, I played around with... Uh, Python's Alembic, and they have the, the, the version inside the file. This is the way that Flyway does it. And the good thing about this one is because you have the basically the version and then the number, and it's an incremental number, you can get to see all the different changes in basically in, in chronological order in your file system. So I like that about Flyway, but you know, whatever tool you have will, will be similar. So all we're doing here is we're creating the user, and I'm going to go into Gradle. I'm going to run Flyway Migrate, and you can see here, again, in the logs, it's um, it's validated two migrations because we have the schema migration and we of course have this this new migration, um, yeah and and that's basically it. It's finished applying this one migration. So if we go to our database and I refresh this guy, we can see hey we have the user table. It's got the ID and the email. So if I now run my application and all it's doing again is inserting this uh, this email. Oops, that's GitHub Pilot trying to be smart. If I run this guy. It's going to be happy. It's going to succeed. It's going to say, "Hey, it's, everything's worked." And if it's trying to log uh, at the bottom, and it's saying, "Hey, we've got a new, we've got a new user, redexample.com," and here's the ID of one. Cool. So we've got our basic setup. Now let's just look at one other scenario, which is, you know, what happens if you need to change the table? We need to alter it. And um, one common thing you face is, what happens if I need to add a non-nullable field? Right. This is quite a common thing. There's a lot of kind of, you know, different strategies, etc., that you might face, and you'll you'll learn those over time. But I think this is possibly one of the most one of the most common ones so what we're going to do um, is inside the code if I of course just add all right well now I want to add a name so let's say I want to add um, blue uh, at example.com and I'm going to add blue here so that's the name there and of course now that shouldn't work right we don't have a name it doesn't exist uh, we need to, to migrate so that's going to fail we don't have the name that's fine let's add our migration so I'm going to copy over again another migration into this now it's going to be v1 we, we are up one version and this is just going to be called we're just adding adding a name and the most uh kind of the thing that i'll stand out here let me just fix up this session so that all uh, is green instead of instead of red so we're altering the table user and we're adding the column name um and if, we, if i just comment this out and if i take this out actually intellij gives gives us a bit of a, a clue so we're, we're adding name text it's not null at this point, so it's not going to cause an issue because we already have data in our database, but it can be null. As soon as I add not null, um, IntelliJ here is actually going to complain. It's going to say, actually, you know, we, we can't do that um, because there's, you've already got data in your database, so it can't it can't be null. What, what do you want to do? So this is a point where we need to figure out different strategies, right? So you may, you know, if you're more familiar, more advanced with with SQL, you might start to write, you know, triggers or functions that go and you know maybe use default the, the email column into the name. I'm just going to keep something very simple here, which I uh, had previously. And I'm just going to say, actually, if, if we don't know what the, the name is, I think I had unknown, but I'm just going to pop in friend, right? So we'll just default everything to friend. We'll, we'll sort out how, how they enter the name later on, maybe the application. That's a different concern. But the most important thing here is we don't want to, to be defaulted after this change. So if I, if I keep this default here and I don't add this in, then we can it's always going to default to friend. What we want to do is we want to force the application to always add a name now going forward. So it's you know it's quite a uh, it's quite a significant change. And this is why we have this second part here, which is alter the table uh, and actually now remove remove the default. So everything before now gets friend. Everything in the future you need to explicitly pass in the name. So if I go to my app here again, final one, I've obviously got blue example blue. I run this, and what I should basically see, oops. Of course, I forgot to run the migration. So if I just run the migration here, that's migrated the database. Um, and now 
I can run the application. Uh, let me just run up here. There we go. And now if we look at the um, the output, we can see that the red at example has, has been defaulted to friend and blue at example.com uh, has been added blue. And of course, now going forward with the app, we can't not add the name. So it's, it's we're kind of explicitly adding, uh, adding a, a kind of a, a hard and fast rule there. And I mean, in terms of kind of database migrations, that's the absolute basic. That's going to be enough to get you very, very far. Um, there's a few other things that's probably worth mentioning with database migrations. You'll, you'll see lots of tools that may have um, other commands, such as undoing, um, undoing, you know, all these repair validate. I've never had to touch any of these. So typically when you want to undo, this is similar to undoing a, a commit, you're going to fail forward. That's kind of the general advice. Um, if, you, <laughs> if you've made a mistake, you need to try, fix it by failing forward, just add another migration and, and essentially revert it. Uh, the only other thing that's worth knowing is the, the baseline, which is, I'm not sure the terminology is common, but it's the same concept, which is if you already have a database, um, if you already have a database and you want to add migrations, you already have a bunch of tables, of course, you need to basically add a baseline. You need to say, well, I'm not starting from scratch, but I'm starting from a certain point. And conceptually, the way you would do that, uh, imagine we had no migrations here, but we had you know, this, this user table, what you do is you basically need to extract uh, basically the SQL that would create your entire database. So uh, here in, in my case, I can just go to SQL scripts and I can copy the, the DLL to the clipboard. So if I look at what that looks like, um, if I just minimize all these, if I copy everything, it basically takes the shape of the entire schema or every table in the schema and it, and it posts it into one big SQL file. I know that Flyway creates this one automatically, for example, so I can remove that, but this will leave everything else. So you can see that I've just got the user table with the email and the name. And then what you would do is you just add that to a, a file and then you'd basically perform like a, a baseline command, which basically updates, manually updates this, uh, this table, which if I refresh now, you can see uh, the state. You'd basically manually update this table to say, actually, I've added all these uh, SQL scripts, but you know you can skip them. So update the, the, the state here. We can skip them because we've already run them. Um, and then going forward, you need to follow the, the standard state pattern here. But I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I shall see you in the next one.